Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Let's get started. The sternocleidomastoid is the most prominent muscle in the neck. It has two sections or heads. The first originates on the top of the sternum, just inside of the clavicle. The muscle comes up to insert into the mastoid process, a big bump on the skull behind the ear. The second head originates on the top edge of the clavicle, on the inner third. The muscle also comes up to insert under the first head at the mastoid process. The name sternocleidomastoid can look intimidating, but it's really simple if we break it down. Sterno references the sternum, where the first head originates. Clido references the clavicle, where the second head originates. Mastoid refers to the mastoid process where both parts of the muscle insert. Like most anatomy, it is named for its location, function, or shape. In this case, its location, from the sternum and clavicle to the mastoid process. This means we can call this the sternal portion and this the clavicular portion. The sternocleidomastoid moves the head. Because it anchors to the chest and acts on the side of the head, if it contracts, it will pull on the side of the head, swiveling it around. The head will turn in the opposite direction of whichever muscle is contracting. If the right side contracts, we look left. If the left side contracts, we look right. When we face forward, the sternocleidomastoid comes from behind the ear to the middle of the neck, creating a graceful spiral. When the muscle contracts, the side in action will be pulled tight, creating a long straight line. The opposite side will be stretched out, spiraling even more to aim for the mastoid process behind the ear. Now let's find the sternocleidomastoid on the surface. The landmarks will help us place the muscle. This curved depression is called the pit of our neck, and it's the top of our sternum. On either side, we see the bony landmark of the clavicles moving out to the shoulder. Just inside the clavicle, we see the strong line of the sternal portion as it moves up to the mastoid process behind the ear. In general, the sternal portion will be a pronounced shape on the surface. This shadow here coming from the inner third of the clavicle is the clavicular portion as it moves up and under the sternal portion to insert into the mastoid process. Because this model's head is turned, this side of the sternocleidomastoid is a long straight line. On the other side, we can see the strong origin point at the sternum and a stretched spiral as the sternal portion wraps around the neck to its insertion point. We can also see the surface detail here showing the clavicular portion flowing out from underneath the sternal portion. On this model, we can also see bony landmarks of the clavicle and sternum, with the strong line of the sternal portion of the sternocleidomastoid moving up behind the ear. But we can't see any surface landmarks for the clavicular portion. It would be easy to confuse this shadow for the clavicular portion, but it's too far out to be part of the sternocleidomastoid. It is actually the trapezius muscle, making up the back of our neck and upper shoulder. The clavicular portion will sometimes be so thin it doesn't present on the surface, but we can figure out where it would be by using our knowledge of the origin and insertion of the muscle. On the other side, we see a very soft shadow here, indicating the sternal portion wrapping around the neck. As before, the clavicular portion is invisible, but we can find it using our knowledge. and we can see the trapezius as the profile edge here. Remember all of these points when drawing the sternocleidomastoid. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.